By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome as well back to the Uften Troll Cup in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. And this is another match from that cup. If you've missed the first match, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. And that will take you to game no or match number one. And this second match is between two very interesting decks again. It's the uh, blue white louter aggro control deck played by Kos playing against green aggro played by Tim. And before we're going to the actual match, I'm just going to do a quick deck review. I don't have the deck pictures, but I do have like, I have an idea of the cards they play. So I'm gonna show you a hand for both of these decks. Now, if you wanna go directly to game number one, you can do so by clicking on the timestamp below and it'll take you directly to the first games. But for now, I'm going to do some deck tech first. The first deck that I would like to discuss is the deck played by Kos and it is the uh, white, blue, Alban, Lauter, Aggro, Troll deck. And this is basically what you can expect when you're playing against this deck. Um, it has an aggressive package being four Savannah Lions, four Surrounded Befreeds, and I believe also some Sarah Angels. So it's, it's pretty creature heavy. Uh, it also plays with your control package from um, blue and white. As far as I know, he plays with four swords, also with some disenchants, I'm sure, and of course a balance. Then he's also playing with a full play set of counter spells. I believe a mana drain, maybe also some power sinks, but I'm not sure because I, I haven't seen the actual deck list. He's also playing with your two famous black cards, and you can see one of them there in the back of this hand, the Demonic Tutor. He's also playing with the Mind Twist. So of course, the City of Brass is important for him having different types of mana uh, available. And also he's playing with, of course, the dual lands that he needs to, including the Tundra. I also think he's playing with a full, uh, the full blue power. So not, not just the Mox Sapphire, but also Ancestral Recall, Time Walk. Although I'm not sure if he plays with a Time Twister. So maybe because if you're watching this video, you can answer that if you've boarded in the Time Twister. I do know he's playing with the Brain Geyser as well. So overall, this is just a very strong deck because you have a lot of answers, but you also have a lot of aggression. So it's gonna be really difficult, I think, for the opponent to, to stand a chance. I would say the Lauter deck is definitely a fav favorite in this uh, matchup. So let's look at the other deck, the Green Aggro deck. And this is a sample hand of the green aggro deck. And I guess this deck has a little bit more beef than some green decks. I don't believe he's playing with a winter orb, so that's not in this hand. Instead, he's playing with ice storm. So he has a full play set of ice storms and a full play set of Urnum Jins. And then of course, uh, what you hope to do is what you see with the Urnum on ice deck as well. He's played at Lanawar Elf, turn one, and maybe turn two, play an ice storm, and then turn three, have that Urnum. So you have optimal uh, pressure and maybe one of the lands you've played is a Pendlehaven or maybe a Mishra's Factory and you can even deal some more damage when you get to uh, your turn number uh, number four. So I, I think that's kind of the idea here. He does play with Giant Groves and again I'm not sure if he plays with Berserks. I don't think so to be honest. So um, maybe Tim if you're watching this video you can let us know if you do play with it or don't. What I really like uh, in his deck is he's playing with a full playset of Gasban Ogre it's one of my favorite creatures. I just find it, the art great. And this it's a 2-2 two, two for one. And it just goes to whoever has the most life. I kind of I think it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It is a very risky card to play. Um, I think, I wonder if Kos has Psionic Blasts. I do believe he plays them in the Louter deck. So that, that could be tricky as well when he plays a well-placed Psionic Blast. Uh, maybe he can then take control of the Gazban Ogre. Then again, I don't think the Gazban Ogre is going to be that important that they're going to fight over the control of it, uh, of it. But it would be definitely a nice detail if that uh, could happen. I think the most important thing here for, for Tim is just to play very opportunistic. Just to go for it, you know. That's all you can basically do. It's a pretty straightforward deck. Like I said when discussing the Loud deck, I do believe that Kos has an advantage because he simply has more answers and he has an um, aggressive package as well. But then again, you know, if the green deck, if it starts rolling, if you get the right cards, if you get that Ice Storm at the right time to kind of slow your opponent down, if your opponent cannot find a creature or an answer, or you can do some, some good trades, there's definitely a chance here for green aggro to win this match as well. So this is it for the deck tech part of the video. And now we are going to the actual game. So let's quickly go to game number one. Game number one, and we have Kos on the left sitting with the Alban Lauter uh, aggro control deck, the blue-white deck, and we have the green mono player Tim sitting on the 
right and apparently he's drinking Hertog Jan okay and uh, <laughs> Jeanette that's Belgian beer uh, but what I am trying to say here on the right side we have the mono green player Tim and I believe he's just playing uh, green aggro here and can we see that hand and look at that he's showing it I see a forest a gas band ogre a lot of elves the other cards are a little bit ha uh, hard to define but it looks like a good start here for the green player and he's on the play as well starting here with the Lanawar elves so he's choosing to go for the mana ramp and not for the Gazban Ogre. And there's the Savannah line. So there's that pressure package that Kosi's deck has. I believe he's playing with a full playset of the lines. And let's see what Tim can do next. And is he able to maybe play an Ice Storm? I don't know if it's in his deck. And playing a second force here trading interesting choice and playing the script sprites and the gasman ogre and actually um it's not so bad to trade here because it seems that the green deck doesn't need oh <laughs> look at this a double savannah line what i wanted to say it looks like the uh deck doesn't need that many uh, mana to perform and here an aggressive attack what would have been maybe interesting here is to say i'm going to let the gasman ogre live and maybe later in the game i'm going to try to take it over with that life count and there's also the factory from Tim and it's now Kos uh, what is he gonna do playing an island and that's it so no surrender per free but he is able to counter now having two blue mana open with that city of brass being able to make a blue mana and playing another forest attacking here that means that Kos is going to 17 tapping three here there's an ice storm but there is a mana drain and that's not too bad of a trade, I think, here for Tim. And going here to 15, playing a Sarah Angel and a Black Lotus. And this is always a problem when you're playing with smaller creatures. As soon as you kind of get into that mid-game section of the game, you're usually in trouble because your opponents start playing out bigger threats like the Sarah Angel. And this is a nice answer, though, the 4-5. But there's a counter spell. Has to sack the Lotus though to play it, but I think it's a good decision. So the Urnum Jin is off the table. And there's a big attack now coming in. That means 8 damage if he doesn't block here. And Tim isn't blocking. Which makes sense, you know. It's not yet time for Chum blocking, he can do that later. Um, playing another force. Only 2 cards in hand there, but Kos's hand is empty. Does he have some gas still? Playing an Ice Storm now to get rid of the factory. And attacking, and I guess since he's gonna bump, maybe Kos has a Swords to Plowsiers here to take care of the Mistress factory. Or is he pretending to have it? And they're trading here. So that was a nice bluff. And actually a trade, or actually losing the lines for that is not too bad. He's still able to deal a lot of damage. He's on four life now. Uh, it's not looking very good here for Tim. He needs, he needs something. He needs to deal with that Sarah Angel first. But that's difficult with green. He does have that Ice Storm, which is kind of turning into creature removal now because of those factories. So that does mean that if Kos is now going to attack, probably just with the Angel, he has to chum block here. So there goes the sprites. No giant growth, unfortunately, for Tim. And that's it. That's game number one. So I kind of felt like what I said with this green aggro um, build, you really need to deal a lot of damage very early in the game. As soon as you go into mid game, you get in trouble. Definitely against these strong, uh, louder aggro control decks. So let's give them some time to sideboard and we'll catch up in game number two. Game number two is about to start and I guess at least the green player gets to start again, which is good when you play aggro. So let's see if green can put some more pressure on Kos uh, this time around. And there again, we see a pretty good opening here. Yuslana where elves turn one, it's great. And there's a library of Alexandria. Ooh, let's hope he has an ice storm here to take care of that Loa. Does he, does he, does he? 
and playing another land and yes he does playing that ice storm and to be honest i'm pretty happy with that because a library game would be a little dull so the low is off the table here there's this event alliance again and here is an urnum and this is basically what the green player wants to do a little bit of that urnum on ice tactic in here and putting that creature early on the board passing turn here and giving this event a line forest walk and interesting here i see that tim also played a factory mistress factory and there is a strip mine so this is looking pretty good actually for tim he can put some pressure on attacking here Ooh, and that was of course that mana floating from the tundra still i guess and i guess he he did that in the first main phase still and there's another urnum and only one land here for coast and that's of course a problem can he find a second land drop he can and it's a tundra so that's good he has both mana and now he has counter capability online now remember when you're playing against this white blue decks it's very difficult because you're playing against a full package of counter spells and a full package of the classic white removal disenchant sword story it's not easy because your opponent has just so many answers Attacking him with the 4-5, so a force block here, losing the lions. And what is he going to play out now in his second main phase? Tapping quite a lot here, playing a Suchi. Well, that's pretty nice. Not sure what the players are discussing here, but he's playing out the Suchi, and Kos is not countering it. Maybe he has a disenchant in hand. Maybe he just doesn't have a counter spell. And will there be a control magic? No, there's actually a balance. Wow, this is much better than a control magic. And this is pretty brutal here for Tim. And I guess he did take that risk. Then again, there's only one balance in a deck. There's the Gasban Ogre. And if I look at Kos's life total, he's still on 18. So despite the fact that he had a pretty slow start, he's still on 18. I'm playing that Surrender Jin now. And that's the problem here. As soon as you have a bigger creature hitting the board, just like that Sarah Angel earlier, that's a little bit difficult. And can he find another Suchi or another Urnum? And he has to pass turn. And that means 3 damage. And of course, Ko's also going to 17 because of the damage from the Surrender. Playing another Surrender. This is not looking great again for Tim. It looked like he had momentum at the start of the game with that Ice Storm on the Loa and that Strip Mine and, you know, playing out the Urnum, turn three. But it's just not enough. That, that balance really changed the game. And I wonder what Tim still can do. Attacking here with his 2-2. Probably having a giant growth in hand then, I guess. Question if it's, it, does Kos want to block? He's just letting it go, going to 15 here. Tapping four, playing a Suchi. And no disenchant. Taking two damage here, Kos going to 13. Attacking, hitting Tim here for six. He's going to 15. If he would have had a side blast, he could have taken over that uh, Gasman Ogre. Another Urnum, or sorry, another Surrender Pafrit. Three Surrender Pafrits, that's just a killer. And a Hurricane would be really nice by now. Just having a Hurricane would be just great. I guess he's gonna attack here with the Suchi and maybe also, yeah, just attack it with everything basically. What else can you do? And this is how he's gonna block probably Tim can still use it to pump, so they're going to trade. And does he have a giant growth? He does not, so it was a bluff. And dealing 4 damage here. Taking another 3, going down to 6. Which is pretty good. But it looks like it's just not enough. He needs 2 more turns. Oh, and look at that, playing a Brain Geyser. That could be the change in the game as well. And he's going down to 9. Needing a blocker, of course, for the Suchi. I think here I, I would personally attack with the Factory. 
and the Suchi. I mean, of course he has a white mana open and he has two cards in hand, but you kind of have to take the risk. I mean, he cannot block the flyers anyway, so he'll have to attack. That's what he does here, so he blocks the Suchi. Does he have a Giant Grove? And I'm starting to wonder now if Tim actually plays with, with Giant Grove. I mean, he, he must be playing with it, right? I mean, he has, he has a mono green deck. Beautiful green deck, by the way. It's all black bordered. Really enjoy looking at it. Um, and we have Ghost here with the Alban Louder deck. Going to two life. Being able to deal six damage, but that's not going to be enough. Or does he have a Psyblast? I know he plays Psyblasts in this deck. And that's just, you know, old school blue is just ridiculously good. There's a control magic. <laughs> but is it going to be enough? I mean, it's going to get two damage, right, next turn. He's attacking here. And that's it. That's game. Oh, I'm really... Story goes, I like your deck, but I'm just really happy to see this green stompy deck um, win. And of course, I'm really happy because we are going to a game number three. And that's always the most exciting so, uh, Tim, I'm really curious now, do you have Giant Groves and, and are we going to see them? And, and do you have Berserks? I mean, those two cards is what you do expect in a green aggro build, but uh, maybe we'll see that in game number three. Game number three, and um, yeah, we get a third game. Exciting here. I do think it's going to be really, really tough for the, for the green player, but everything's possible. It's 1-1, and Coast, the player on the left with the Alban Lauter. Blue, white, aggro control deck on the play here. And there we see the Gusban, but there's a quick response here, a Swords. Second Tundra played, passing turn here, and that Pendlehaven is looking good. Is there going to be a creature here on Tim's side? Tapping two. There's an Argovian Pixies. I wonder if he's playing that main or put it in from the sideboard against those Mishra's factories. And we see Coast looking at his hand, and he decides to sort that as well. That means that Tim is going to 24, and there is a Savannah Lions. Difficult now, because you don't want to trade your factory, I guess, with the Lions. There's a lot of Elves. Passing turn, not attacking, that's interesting. He does have that Pendlehaven, Tim, so he can attack and he can pump his lot Elf. Deciding to tap three, will we see an ice storm? Yes, there's an ice storm, but there's the counter spell. And I do like the addition of ice storms here. I think it's just another way to remove things. And when you think about it, green actually has some removal. It has ice storms, it has uh, it has tranquility, obviously, for enchantments. It also has some artifact removal with crumble. I haven't seen scavenger folk yet in Tim's build. So it does have some answers, just the creature removal part is a little bit tricky with green. And of course you have Desert Twister, but that wouldn't fit in such an aggressive build. And there we have him, there we have the Scavenger Folk. Not extremely useful at this point, but it's another body on the field. And look at that, he's actually sorting his own line, so probably there will be a balance here. That's it. When your opponent is doing that, you, you know it's, it's balance time. And again a balance. And again, a very good deal here for Kos. Going to 20 and playing a Mishra's Factory. Taking a damage from his own city. Ooh, and there's that Black Splash playing a Demonic Tutor. Passing turn here to Tim while he's looking for a card. Attacking here, Kos going to 17, but no new creature. And there's a mind twist, and oh man, this is just brutal. And uh, this could be the end. Oh, look at that! Oh, did you see that? He's throwing away two Urnums and a Suchi. So much power there, getting lost. Oh, Tim, oh, that's bad. And I, I'm sorry, Coach, but I am kind of rooting for the player that isn't playing with the mind twist. But, I mean... There's just so much quality in the louder build here. Attacking for four, playing a control magic, making matters even worse. Probably a card that came in from the sideboard and control magic is just extremely strong against the green build. And I wonder if Tim is even playing with a 
tranquility. To make matters worse, we see an ancestral recall being played at end of turn here, so Kos gets to draw even more cards. And this is turning into a slaughterhouse here. And I mean, Tim needs a miracle. He needs a green balance. That would be ideal, actually. You could just jump block and then play a green balance, but there is no green balance. And I've actually been been thinking about maybe you know creating a mono green build where you don't play with script sprites and instead you play with um, uh, with hurricanes because hurricanes is a way of creature removal and it can even remove multiple flyers in one go. And here we see a block and. That means the Urnum dies, so not a not a bad choice here. But it's also not. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Do you see that blue power there? A time walk, a brain geyser, and I I just feel that there's just too much power coming from the louder deck here. And there's just there's really not much that Tim can do against all this brutality. What can you do against this? This is just a really good draw from Kosa's side here. Finding that balance, finding the Demonic Tutor to find the, the Mind Twist, finding the Time Walk, uh, finding the Brain Geyser. And did I already mention the Ancestral Recall? I mean, it's just insane. I mean, what can you do here? Playing another Surrender of Freedom. Tim's go now is one card in hand. Two basic forests and a Lunawer Elves. And I think it's time to go to the bar. Well, it's just a second round, so you get some more rounds in here. Playing a Giant Grove over his Lanower Elf. So that's four damage here. And um, that's gonna be it. Yeah, that's game, that's game. Very convincing game number three here from the Alban Lauter deck. Very strong here, very well played by Coase, but what an amazing draw he had as well at a certain point. It was just crazy to see. He's now going to board out his, his control magics again. Congratulations, Coase, on this win. I believe it's your second win here at the tournament at the uh, Ufton Troll Cup in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to see more old school magic, have a look at the channel, browse around, I have more than 100 videos. If you want to support the channel, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, spread the videos. Um, for now, once again, thank you for watching and keep an eye on the channel because I will be posting more games from this very exciting tournament, the Often Troll Cup in Leeuwarden.